ahead and read down them. And what do you, what kind of, uh, I guess most of you already know my problem paper, what, what's it over? But what would you think these symptoms represent? What, Kayla? Uh, End of semester project. Could you think of any other ones though? <laughs> Distractibility. Maybe ADHD. Hyperactivity. Yeah. ADHD. ADHD. Yeah. yeah. And that's a lot of the problem with bipolar disorder is because all of these symptoms are of bipolar disorder, but there's a lot of them that can overlap, like distractibility, ADHD, and there's just a lot of regular pathological, I mean, there's just a lot of disorders that overlap with the same disorders of bipolar. And bipolar disorder and the uh, happy face and sad face are kind of uh, significant of the two um, symptoms. Um, the first symptom is bipolar. The first symptom is depression. That's the first thing you should recognize whenever one of your students is going to have bipolar. And then the most um, common, the signifying um, symptom that is uh, different from any other uh, disorder will be the mood swings between a manic and depressive state. Um, a manic state is energy surges, increased um, rate of thinking, creativity, increased sexuality, and less need to sleep. And depression is energy certain. Wait, no. That's a copy and paste there. Um, wait, is that right? No. Yeah, it's the opposite. So you're going to need, like, you're always going to be sleepy. I did put that wrong. Um, you're always, it's just a depression. It's basically the same thing as depression. You just don't have any energy. You don't want to do anything. You have no desire for anything. And then the common myths for um, bipolar, when I originally started doing bipolar disorder, I thought the child went from a manic state to a depressive state, depressive state, like maybe within that day. I mean, like back and forth. And they're always on the edge. They're always uh, depressive or they're always in the manic state, which is not the case at all. Most of the time a, um, a person experiencing bipolar or diagnosed with bipolar are just like any one of us most of the time, but then they will hit their relapse or when they go into their manic or depressive state and they'll stay in that state for about two weeks and then they'll come out of it. It can, I mean, it can go for a matter of, it can go for a day when they're in the manic state and then, I mean, ha have off a day and then go into the depressive state, but for the most part, um, it'll be, I mean, a week or two they're in the depressive state or the week or two they'll be in the manic state, which was what I found interesting. Um, these are the two different sides of manic and depression. Um, I kind of already went over that, I won't take time on that. Um, recognition of bipolar can start at birth and it should start at birth because you can start seeing um, as early as a, re a really young age, you can start seeing irritability in a child, and that's kind of a um, sign of bipolar disorder in children. And suicide notions can start even at the age of four, which I thought it was really shocking. I'm, I don't know how they would think up the uh, notions of suicide, but studies was this study said that it can start with the age of four, so it's really important at an early age to start realizing that. Um, they should see the doctor immediately because it takes a long time to di diagnose uh, bipolar disorder. Um, suicidal notions, um, one out of five children will die from suicide and as many as 50% will attempt suicide, which I thought was a little crazy. but. I mean, it's in Simpson and Jameson, they actually did it in their study. So, um, like I said before, it's crucial for the, um, to see a doctor at an early age. Uh, mis mis misdiagnosis is a huge problem. Is that five minutes or two minutes? Okay. Uh, mixed diagnosis is a huge problem, like I said earlier, because it can overlap with ADHD, um, oppositional defiant disorder, and conduct disorders. And, I mean, in the middle school, Middle schoolers, are, middle schoolers are so out there and you don't know what to expect from them. They'll be this one day, they'll be this the next day. So it's almost, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but I mean, as teachers, we can't diagnose a child. We can't say to a parent, you have, your child has bipolar disorder. All we could do is, I'm not sure if we're even allowed, are we allowed to recommend no, because the child? Okay. All the, I mean, 
but it's important to see the symptoms of the child, then you can tell the symptoms to a counselor or the parent. Um, but it's really important, what was I trying to say there? Um, but, oh, middle schoolers are just out there and they, uh, you don't know what to expect from them. So if a child does have bipolar, it's sometimes unnoticeable. And then if a child, like I said, well, my words. If a child does have bipolar, they might just think it's a, like a regular symptom. If a child comes to class one week and it's all hyper, mm -hmm. and they come to class next week, maybe they just lost sleep. Mm -hmm. So a misdiagnosis is a huge problem. Um, you shouldn't say that you think this child has bipolar because there's so many. It's I would say it, it is pretty much impossible for a person that has not. I wouldn't be able to diagnose a child with bipolar. It's nearly impossible. I would, the biggest um, thing is getting them to a doctor so they can di uh, diagnose them. Um, and there's a big difference between uh, what a, a child with bipolar and an adult with bipolar, which when one of my studies, they went over that. And um, um, a child with bipolar will um, irritability, silly, goofy behavior, rapid speaking and racing thoughts. As an adult with bipolar will spend money impulsively, commit sexual acts, and make reckless decisions. So there's a big difference. And all the bi bipolar disorder diagnosis is based on um, the adult symptoms, which is a bad thing. And then the short observation amount of time for doctors. Doctors have, I mean, only a certain amount of time. And diagnosis is based on a lifetime of bipolar, lifetime uh, occurrences. Um, treatment, pharmaceuticals is the preferred method right now, although in all my studies, um, I didn't even actually, I, I started to read on the pharmaceuticals, the actual drugs, but all the studies I looked at were arguing against um, pharmaceuticals, so it seems like they're trying to get away from pharmaceuticals, and uh, a big part of it is educating the actual person with bipolar on their own um, disease so they can prevent the relap relapses of um, mania and depression. Um, I need to get going. Um, helping, um, the first, the, the biggest thing is noticing um, the symptoms and um, like I said before, you can't diagnose it yourself, but tell somebody else of it. Um, you can even, uh, the person that has bipolar can give you a list of the things that they, that sets them off. So you know that you shouldn't be doing these things. I mean, you know to keep them away. Um, I'll skip over that. I know I'm going over. Um, that's about it. <laughs> yes.